Thank you for joining us for worship at Calvary Road Baptist Church. Calvary Road is under the pastoral leadership of Senior Pastor John Swanger, Executive Pastor Dr. Mark Golden, Youth and Missions Pastor Seth McClure, and Music Minister Dan Benham. At Calvary Road, we desire to lead you to a deeper and more intimate walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you join us in this worship service, we pray that you see the name of Jesus exalted above every other name. Come and celebrate our resurrected Lord, which we celebrated last Sunday. Is He still alive today? Yes. Let's stand to our feet as we sing about our victorious Jesus. Victory in Jesus. and thank you for joining us for Sunday morning worship. Visitors, we would like to say a special welcome to you. 
If this is your first time visiting with us, we would ask that you please fill out a Connect card located in the seat in front of you. If you have a prayer need that you would like our staff to be aware of, please complete the blue prayer card located in the seat in front of you as well. You can drop your cards in the offering box as you leave the service today. You may also go to our website or mobile app to fill out a Connect card or a prayer request. Here are a few announcements for you to keep in mind. Don't forget, if you have checked out a baby bottle for our Mountain Area Pregnancy Services Missions Project, they are to be turned in by next Sunday, April the 18th. We are excited to announce that Sunday school and small groups will start back beginning next Sunday, April the 18th. Go to our website or mobile app to see the classes offered and register for the class that you would like to attend. On Sunday, April the 18th, we will be having a special service. Our candidate for pastor of discipleship and spiritual development, Matt Cowan, will be bringing the message. We will be having meet and greet times with Matt and his wife, Rebecca, on Friday evening, April the 16th from 6 to 7 p.m. and on Saturday, April the 17th from 12 to 1 p.m. at the Multipurpose Building. We will be having a marriage retreat in Greenville, South Carolina on November the 12th and 13th. Please be on the lookout for more information to come. We will be holding a graduation recognition service on Sunday, May the 23rd. This will be for high school and college seniors. If you are a high school senior, please send a baby picture, senior picture, and family picture to Tony Rogers at the email on the screen. If you are a college senior, please send a family picture. All youth that plan on attending Whisper Mountain this summer, July the 26th to the 30th, we would ask that you please register on the Whisper Mountain website or follow the link on our church website. Please register by May the 7th so we can have an accurate number for those planning on attending. Good morning, church family. It's good to see each one of you here this morning. And I just want to reiterate those visitor cards and prayer cards. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, uh, take the opportunity to look in the seat in front of you. You'll find one of those uh, beige colored cards take it fill it out and then as you make your way out of the building today drop it in the offering box and that'll give us a record of your visit also gives us a way to get in contact with you to find out if there's any more information that you're in need of in regards to the church and always counted a joy and a privilege to look at those prayer cards and join with you in praying uh, over those needs that you have that you'd like to share with us so keep all that in mind and we are so very glad that you're here this morning. The tomb is still empty today, amen? We celebrated that last Sunday in a tremendous way. But folks, that is an eternal truth that you and I get to celebrate each and every day of our life. That the tomb is empty, and because the tomb is empty, our hearts don't have to be. We can live with purpose, and uh, God has a plan for our life. If we'll just surrender to Him, He'll lead us and guide us and direct us as He sees fit. And we're just delighted that you're here with us this morning. I want you to worship right along with us as we move along in the service. One other quick announcement. I need to let all of the children's ministry workers here at Calvary Road know that we will have a quick meeting following our Wednesday night this coming week. We'll probably just meet back here uh, in the modulars. So if you serve with our children, uh, children's ministry, especially on Wednesday night, if you will just plan on meeting me back in the uh, modulars uh, immediately after our Wednesday night gathering. And we are just delighted that you're here with us today. And uh, at this time, Pastor Seth is going to come and give our mission moment. Good morning, church. I uh, wanted to share with you this week about the Lawson family. Uh, they are missionaries to the southern Amazon region, region of Brazil. They are not a regularly supported mission family but uh, this family was brought to my attention uh, a couple weeks ago they had a need um, Brian is the name of the dad uh, you can see the family there and they had a car that they bought and it basically died on them and they were unable to really get anywhere and so he was walking around doing his ministry sharing Bibles passing out tracts evangelizing he was walking everywhere that he was going because the repairs on the, cost, uh, on the car were pretty substantial, and he didn't want to put any more money into it. And so uh, another pastor in the area let me know about this need. And so you, uh, because of your missions giving, has helped provide uh, money for him to be able to purchase a, a vehicle to get around and do ministry. So this is a Lawson family. 
Um, that he's doing a great work. Um, they, I spoke with him this week, and he told me, he said, Pastor, I'm, whatever you feel led to do, we're trusting God. If God has us and right now in our ministry and our family that we don't have a car to be able to get around, then we're content. We're content with that. If that's where God has us, then we're content. And so I was really able to hear his heart, and um, your, the money that you give towards Samaria as well has went to help purchase a vehicle for him and his family to be able to get around and do ministry. So uh, the next thing is I wanted to remind you of the shoe drive uh, that we are participating in. The boxes are out there in the lobby area. Uh, just any of your lightly used, used uh, or new shoes, if you want to turn those in, those go to an organization that, that gives a check to Waynesville Middle School that goes to the students that are in need. Then they take those shoes and they give them to, uh, entre it's an entrepreneurial uh, program, and they give them to small businesses in, in uh, third world countries like Africa to help create sustainable income. And then the next thing is I want, from, from Alex and I, we wanted to say thank you for all of the gifts that you give towards uh, our baby, baby Malachi. Um, we are working on thank you notes, um, so I just wanted to say from, from here that we really appreciate everything you've done. Uh, you provided everything that we needed and some, and so we wanted to say thank you for that. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day and being able to be together once again and for the opportunity to worship you this morning and hear the word. We do pray for the Lawson family this morning and the work that they are doing in Brazil. I ask God that today, as they have their own services, Lord, that you would hide Brian behind the cross as he preaches the word. And God, that many would be saved under his ministry. For the sake of your glory and for the sake of your name in Brazil. And God, we ask and pray a special blessing over Mountain Area Pregnancy Services this morning in light of the baby bottle campaign we're participating in. God, what a tremendous ministry that that is and how significant it is to be involved in the, live, in the, the work of saving the lives of little babies. And we pray, God, that you would be in the work with us, that you continue to lead us. And we pray now for the service to come. Pray for our pastor as he brings the word that you would hide him behind the cross and that the words that are spoken would be directly from you. God, we thank you for this time. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Who taught the sun where to stand? can only come this far and who showed the moon where to hide till evening whose words alone can catch a falling star well I know my redeemed This life with a need to cry. 
precious life he gave, but now he's alive and there's an empty grave. And I know my Redeemer is. I know my Redeemer. Good morning. As Miss Debbie was singing that song this morning, I got to thinking, so Pastor John's going to preach to us boys and girls. If y'all want to stand up, you can. I'd like for all the boys and girls to stand up because you guys are so awesome. Look at all these kids. Man, Woo, that's awesome. As I was listening to Miss Debbie sing that, God just really touched my heart. Um, there was these two guys, and they were walking down the street, okay? They were on the, the road to Emmaus. Have you guys heard that before? Sometimes the choir sings a song. I think we should make John, I'm just kidding. Um, walking and talking on the road to Emmaus um, would have been perfect for this morning. But um, anyhow, I just got to thinking, I bet when these two guys' encounter with Jesus was over, I bet they were singing Miss Debbie's song because they knew that their Redeemer lived, and that, that just fits so perfect. Um, so I just want to read a little bit of something to you. So at this point um, this morning, Jesus has died. He was placed in a tomb. Um, his disciples were scared out of their wits, and they were hiding out somewhere, Okay. Um, then Sunday morning came, and the women reported that the stone had been rolled away, and there was nobody in that tomb. Peter and John ran to the tomb to see for themselves, and then all the disciples locked themselves in a room because they weren't real sure what was going to happen next. Um, they were afraid. They were fearful because everything they had hoped for, everything that they thought would come to be, it wasn't unfolding the way they thought it should, all right? But here's, um, to get to the point of the story this morning, um, it, Jesus comes ac upon these two men walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, okay? And these two men, they were really sad because Jesus had died. And, and in their hearts and in their minds, all their hope for a Messiah had died with him. And so Jesus approaches them, but they don't know it's Jesus. And they're just talking, and, and they're sad, and um, they're talking about all the things that had happened. And I think it's kind of neat how Jesus does things. I mean, I just think it's really neat how he does things. But he just walks up to them, and he's like, what things? What things are you talking about? Did Jesus not know what they were talking about? Do you think Jesus really didn't know what they were talking about? He knew, didn't he? He did. He, he knew what they were talking about. And as they walked and as they talked, they began to talk out loud about all the things that had happened. And through this, Jesus reminded them that Scripture had foretold that this would have to happen. In order for God to, to be glorified, in, in order for Jesus to, to get to the place where he needed to be so that we could be saved from our sins, this all had to happen, all right? And so through this encounter, could you imagine boys and girls walking down the street and Jesus walks up to you and he's like, hey, what's up? 
Can you imagine? Would that not be so cool if he did that? Well, here's what I want to tell you. He does that. He's right there. He's walking and he's talking with you. Um, And what he reminded these two men of is that the word of God had foretold what was going to happen. And what I want us boys and girls to get from this story is that we've got to get in God's word and we've got to know God's word so that when things happen and they don't seem exactly like we thought we should, they would, they would happen, we'll still know he's in control and his story is unfolding. Okay, thank you.
was given for the sinner and for the debtor. Now my debt has fully been paid. You sent my Savior. God, I owe you my life. You settled my forever. I owe you every day, every day. stand today, turn around, wave at each other, speak to your neighbor, introduce yourself. Our choir's coming down. Children, you can go to We Worship at this time. I don't have that hymn. I've got to get... you're standing this morning uh, it's good to be back in God's house isn't it I got up this morning 
with an old hymn on my heart. And uh, I don't know, but I feel like this morning, I don't do this enough. When's the last time you told Jesus you just loved him? And this hymn writer sat down and penned some of the, the prettiest words when it comes to just telling Jesus that we love him. So I'm sure you probably know this. I'm probably not the greatest leader of some of these things, but we're going we're gonna to slow this hymn way down. We're going to put it in Dan's speed. And it's just, uh, just really look at the words. And if we'll look at the words and we'll let them words just sit in us this morning. I don't want you to sing so that your neighbor can hear you. Um, some of our praise and worship is newer and some of it was written many years ago. And this morning, maybe you just need to come and kneel in an altar and just thank him. Don't ask him. You don't need to ask him for anything. But when's the last time you just told him you loved him? And just thanked him for what he's done for you. Listen to these words. Let's sing together. My Jesus, I love
shut out the world I love and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice take joy my king Except our own. And I want you to shut your eyes and don't pay no attention to nobody else around you. And think about how good God's been to you. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to Take joy, take joy, my King, in what you hear, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Father, we do love you this morning sometimes we don't show it enough sometimes we don't tell you enough but as we've heard this morning you don't owe us anything not another second of mercy or grace you don't owe us another second of your love but you give it anyway 
There's so much noise in this world right now, and many of us might have walked in this room with anxiety and trouble. Many of us might have walked in here with fear. I just pray this morning that we'll turn that over to you. We'll let you just have us this morning. Dan, will you come back? Every head bowed just a second. I just got to obey God. I feel something so strong in the room this morning that Pastor Seth and Jocelyn, Mark, you guys come to the front. Some of our deacons will be ready. Man, just don't sit through a church service and let the devil win. Bring fear in your life and struggle in your life. There's a lot today that the world wants us to be anxious about. This morning, if you brought any anxiety at all, any fear, any trouble, or this morning, it just might be that you haven't told him lately that you love him. Maybe you need to bring your marriage. Maybe you want to bring your children. Maybe you want to bring your grandchildren. Or as in our case, our future grandchild. And you just want to come. Just Sometimes the invitation comes before everything else. And we just want to come and bow in an altar this morning and say, God, I bring it all to you. You don't have to tell. You don't have to tell our pastors. Listen, they're just going to come and get around you, and we're just going to pray. You might feel a hand on your shoulders. It's just one of us, one of our men. The world wants us to be anxious over sickness and prices of stuff and materialistic stuff Jesus says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden I'll give you rest and you this morning if you just let God be God just give him all If ever I've loved thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love you because you first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary.
I'm going to give uh, you guys back there, pull up the words in Christ alone. We did this last week. We're going to find those words because we want you to see those words. Give me a thumbs up when you get them. And uh, I can't help this morning but think that Y'all, y'all check me on this. Sometimes we build up so much for Easter, we miss Easter. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, we have the pageantry, we have the music, we have the stuff ready, and, and we come in and somehow we just miss it. I got up this morning and thought... I just can't get the fact out of my mind, the thoughts out of my mind that in Christ alone, Jesus, I love you more than any other thing. And Anywhere in this building this morning, if you're not where you need to be with, with him, what are you waiting on? Why live miserable a second more? Why walk another day in darkness? If you don't know him as Savior this morning, why go another second without Jesus? I'm telling you, he paid it all, and all to him we owe. All right, they say we've got the words. There they are. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength.
Amen. Amen. Well, I've learned in preaching for years. There ain't a thing I can do that'll add to this. The only thing I could do from this point forward is take away. He is in this room. He has been moving in this room. He has spoke to our hearts. He's filled our cup. You don't need to hear me. You need to hear from him. Sometimes that's in that sweet, still, small voice. As he's just walked through the room. If you're in the building today and this makes you highly uncomfortable, there's one of two things that's going on in your life. Number one, you may not know him as Savior. You look around and see people filled with joy and you don't have that. But you can. You can have it today. You can have it right now. Right where you stand, even. Surrender. If you don't know him, just right where you are right now, just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, save me. Save me a sinner. I don't want to live another second in this life without you. It's not coming to a preacher and having a prayer prayed. It's trusting him with your entire being and saying, I believe, Lord, you died for me. I believe you got out of the grave. I believe we just sang a song that I believe those words. I've just never trusted you like I should. Or there's another option. There's the option that you're in the building this morning and you do believe and you have trusted in Him as your Savior, but you're not walking with Him. You might have heard it in the church, uh, backslidden, away, the fact of it is, is it's like a boat that's tied to the dock and it's got a long rope to it. And for a while now, you've been letting rope out. You're still anchored to the dock. Jesus is still your Savior. But you're like a prodigal son. And suddenly today, the Spirit of God has awakened your soul. And you're like that boy who said, I want to go back to the Father's house. You've woke up and life around you, it, it's just never going to make sense until he's back in the place that he rightfully belongs. And here's the good news about the Father is when you start home to him, you'll find him with his arms wide open. If you'll make the first step toward him, I promise you, he's waiting on you. So there's those two options in this room. If you're bothered, it might be because the Spirit of God's convicting you you've never been saved. Or the Spirit of God's convicting you that you need to come home. You need to come home. And I'm going to close this service today this way with every head bowed and every eye closed. Some have come this morning and they've brought their troubles or they've come and brought their fears or they've come and brought their anxiousness. Some have come and just nailed this, knelt this morning and said, Jesus, I love you. Some have done that right where they stand. But I believe this morning in the house there's one or two who need to come home rededicate your life this day the 11th day of April say Jesus I'm sorry for where I've been I'm sorry for how I've done listen I've had to do this myself I've been where you're at so come home come home and if that's you today preacher I know I'm saved but I'm not walking with Jesus I've been away from him for a while
nobody's looking, would you just slip your hand up and say, Preacher John, pray for me. This morning I'm making a decision. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. This morning I have decided in this room I'm coming home. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I, I know today God sees you. He sees your heart most of all. Today, right where you are, just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for walking away from you. Forgive me for straying. And Lord, I come back home today and I ask your forgiveness. And the Father's going to do this. He's going to throw a party for you. He's got his arms open wide. He's got the fatted calf ready. He's ready to rejoice that you've come home. All right. Now there might be somebody in the building who would slip up their hand and say, Preacher John, I'm not saved. And I'm going to raise my hand and tell you that I'm not saved because I want you to know that. I want you to pray for me because this morning God has shown me clearly that I am not saved. Slip your hand up real high. I'm not going to go get you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise you this morning if you'll just make that first admission with an uplifted hand say Lord I know I'm lost and I need to be saved anybody anybody in the room I'm just scanning this crowd amen amen well If you leave this building today and you still have questions, I want to promise you we're a phone call away. We'll meet you. You can come to my house. We'll pray together. Seek us out. Any one of us, seek us out. We'd love to talk to you. Now, for those of you that think I didn't study this morning or this week, I did. I, I had a message ready. I got the notes. They're online. I may come to it again here soon. I may never come back to it. I don't know. But I knew when I woke up this morning, God had something different in mind. I just knew that. And I, I just want to obey him. Several years ago, a woman in a church, I, we had a service that it wasn't like this. It wasn't sweet. It was sour. And I was sitting there and God said, just go home. Just go home. And I went to the pulpit and said, folks, I, don't, I, I can't preach this morning. I'm, I'm struggling. There's, I'm, we're, we're just going to dismiss and go home. We had a great Sunday night service. She went to one of my deacons and said, I don't think we, ought, we should pay him for Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> if that's how you feel this morning, we'll, we'll take it out of Mark's check this week. And, <laughs> I look, <laughs> but I know what I know. This, he's been in the room. Amen. We love you dearly. I never apologize for being obedient. I'm just not going to apologize for being obedient. And he said more to you. As a matter of fact, Michelle preached the message in three or four minutes. But don't go out of here saying he said the woman preached it. And uh, I figure if Joel Osteen can let his wife speak, I can let mine speak. And uh, what a marvelous time to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I want to join your church. Amen. Mark, will you get a microphone? She's come forward and wants to join the church. This is Mike, too. They may be someone else this morning. I've been seeing her sitting over there worshiping all name. morning. My name's Raynell. Okay. All right. And she's come this morning to unite with Calvary Road, and she's talked with me, and uh, we're excited to have her this morning. Yeah, so. amen. Raynell, do you have a last name? Oh, yeah. And your tax papers and stuff <laughs> with you? <laughs> they just let him out on the weekend, so it is. <laughs> it's it's Raynell Slate. Raynell. So any Slates in here, congratulations. Amen. <laughs> Good to have her. Amen. Good to have her as a part of the family this morning. 
I just want to say I love Jesus. Amen. I love this church. I love these people. And if anybody in here um, that I can help in any way, I want to be connected with this church. I want to start working for Jesus in this church. Um, we need to work more for Jesus. Yes. We need to witness more. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. He is coming back for our children. Yes. His children. Amen. Our children. Our grandchildren. We need to be preaching Jesus to everybody. I'm so sorry. I don't know. The Holy Spirit, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, Lord, we need Jesus. Let's say his precious Amen. name. Amen. One, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Say it again. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. And just worship him. Amen. I just love him this morning. Amen. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're good. We appreciate that. Amen. Does any other woman want to preach in there this morning? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Not you, Mama. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> She'd have a few illustrations this morning. I don't want y'all to hear. Amen. I love you guys. What a, what a great, awesome crowd. Listen, next week we're going to start our small groups back on Sunday morning for some of you, on Wednesday nights for some of you. If you have any question about that, get a hold of us this week. Ask us. You can try out different classes. If there's classes that fit you better, then go to that class. We're going to study the Word. That's all that matters. And uh, we have a few of those classes set up, and we're ready for that. And uh, online, online, online registration for that. Yeah. And also we've got, uh, sorry about that, we've got sign-up sheets in the foyer this morning. So if you'd like to sign up for those classes, they're in the back back there. Or you can do it online on our website. Please do that because that's going to help us better prepare for the numbers, uh, I will say this, God is great. We are seeing a great turnout for that. People are ready to get back together and study God's Word together in a small group setting, so we're excited about that. So do us a favor, sign up so we can be better prepared uh, to serve you in that capacity, okay? Amen. One prayer request as you leave today. I pray that our grandson will make an arrival soon. And uh, I know that... Uh, She's ready. The due date is today. I told Michelle on the way to church, what a beautiful day for him to come. But if he's got any swung in him at all, he's going to be late. He's going to be late. Y'all have a blessed day. Go get your children uh, if they're in We Worship. And uh, have a great Sunday. We love you. Well, thanks for being with us in worship today. It is our heart's desire that through the word and through this worship service today, God has spoken to your heart and you desire to serve him and to worship him more than you ever have in your life. You know, if you've been watching today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is our greatest desire. If we can be a help to you, if we can uh, assist you in any way, please contact us at the information you see on the screen. We also want to thank those of you who watch us regularly. We greatly appreciate your prayer and support. Keep praying for us as we pray for you as we serve the Lord together. <laughs>